Lesson one, die lines for varnish plates and complex folds. Die lines are used to communicate where a project cuts, folds, and perforates. We we'll use a spot color to separate this content within our design so that it does not interfere with the part of our project that will print with ink. Using a spot color allows us to use solid, dashed, and dotted lines to indicate where a project cuts, folds, which we call scoring, and perforates. The die line is then output as a color separation so that it can be sent to a company that will make a physical die that can then be used to cut out our project. We usually think about die lines when working with packaging, but die lines can be used for so much more. Die lines are also used to communicate the locations on a printed design that require spot coatings, like spot varnish coatings or spot UV coatings. Spot means the coating does not cover the entire page. A flood coating does not require a die line because it indicates the entire design will be covered with a coating. There are many types of coatings available in the printing industry. Aqueous coatings, for example, are water-based and are applied via an attachment at the end of a printing press. They are applied as a flood coating, so aqueous coatings do not require a die line. Varnishes and spot UV coatings are applied using printing plates. Because they use printing plates and because they can be applied to some areas and not others, they will require a die line to indicate where the coating should be applied. Die lines can also be used to design the layout of a project that can be trimmed to size using a traditional guillotine paper cutter, but requires complex folding, like when designing maps or posters that fold down like maps. Let's review the steps for creating a die line. We can then use the same techniques to create a varnish plate or a spot UV plate or a die line for a complex fold. Die line should be made using a specific spot color set aside for the die line. The same spot color can be used for all cuts, folds, and perforations within the design. A new spot color should be used for a new application, like for a new spot varnish plate or for a new spot UV plate. Using the swatches panel to create a new color swatch. You will create the color swatch and then rename the color swatch to be dye line or spot UV or spot varnish as needed. You can use any color you like, but it is always a good idea to use a color that will contrast or stand out over your design. You should also never use this spot color anywhere else in your project. It will not be a printing color. Isolate your die line on its own layer by creating a new layer on the layers panel. Rename the layer to die line or spot varnish as needed, and then move it to the very top of your layers panel so that it always sits on top of your design. The next step is to create your die line. Use vector drawing tools to create the solid, dashed, and dotted lines necessary to indicate where your project cuts, folds, and perforates. Use one point or thinner strokes. Historically, we used hairline strokes, but hairline is no longer an option in InDesign. You can enter a thickness of 0.25 points instead if you wish to use hairline. A key difference between die lines and spot varnish plates is that the varnish plates are indicating the area of your varnish. So your shapes will need to be filled with 100% of the varnish spot color instead of using a stroke. The last step when creating a die line or a spot varnish plate is to set the artwork, the stroke and or the fill color to be an overprint. Failing to set your artwork as an overprint will cause it to remain a knockout, which means the ink within your design that is located below your die line or below your spot varnish plate will not print. It will leave bright white unprinted paper below the die line. Artwork is set to overprint in InDesign using the Attributes panel. You can open it via the Window menu. You'll choose Window, and then Output, and then Attributes. Before we jump over to InDesign, let's talk a little more about a, what a spot varnish or a spot UV or a complex fold really is. The examples on screen show spot varnish coatings. Printing presses do not need specialized equipment to apply spot varnishes. One printing tower must be dedicated to the varnish, 
but otherwise a regular printing press with a custom printing plate can be used. Varnishes come in several finishes like gloss, matte, and satin. They print in line with the other inks while on press and they will also dry along with those inks. UV coatings are stronger, usually thicker coatings that come in an incredible number of finishes and textures. You can get gloss and dull, but you can also get soft touch, glitter, and textures that feel like sandpaper. UV coatings are more expensive than varnishes because they require specialized equipment that is either attached to the end of a printing press or is applied as a separate process. A huge benefit of UV coatings is that they dry or cure instantly when exposed to UV light. Last, dye lines show us where to cut, fold, and perforate a project, but they don't always have to show us all three. A map fold is a good example of a project that requires a dye line but not a dye line to show us cuts. Instead, we can use the dye line to communicate exactly where the project needs to fold so, what? so that when the large unfolded map is folded down to size, it will end up folding exactly the way that we are intending. Sometimes these complex fold dye lines are used to make an actual dye, which means the map would be scored prior to folding, while other times we just use them to make sure the printing company who will be folding our map knows exactly where we want it to be folded when they're using their automated folding machine to fold it. Let's jump over to InDesign and create a basic map fold die line together. We'll also practice setting up a project for spot varnish printing. For this demo, I will show you how to create a die line for a complex fold and how to set up a project for a spot coating, like a spot UV coating or a spot varnish plate. You will need to have the following panels open. The layers panel, swatches panel, attributes panel, separations preview panel, and strokes panel. You can open them via the window menu. So window, color, and then swatches. Window, output, and attributes, and separations preview. You can open up the strokes panel just from the window menu and then we can get started. I took one of the examples from the earlier part of the lesson and I've mapped out where the project folds with these cyan and magenta lines to give you an idea of where the project folds. As you learned in the earlier part of the lesson, complex folds and map folds can get rather complex. So this is a rather basic complex fold that will allow us to practice setting up a die line and remembering all the steps that we would take to create that die line before we have to actually make one for our own project. In the example, the lines are all wonky and askew, but when we create the die line, they are going to be straight. So we're gonna pretend that this light blue rectangle is our paper. So I've added it and it's on layer one. I'm going to rename layer one paper. And then before I get started, I want to make sure that I have all the layers that I'll need for my project. So I'm going to create a new layer. This will be for our design. So if we were making the poster in the example, that would be for all of the green text and the grayscale pictures about the educational workshop. I also want to make a new layer for each die line. A die line to indicate where something cuts, folds, and perforates can all be on its own layer and we can call it die line. If I was making uh, or identifying a spot varnish plate, I would need a separate layer for spot varnish. If you know that it's dull varnish, you can put spot dull varnish. You can be as descriptive as possible, but what's important is that each new die line that you're creating um, for a different intent um, needs to have its own layer. The next step is to create a spot color. And just like the layers, every new type of dye line needs its own spot color. We are making a traditional dye line that indicates cuts, folds, and perforations. So we will create one spot color for that. And while we're at it, we can create a spot color for our spot dull varnish, which we'll demo second. On the swatches panel, to create a new color swatch, you hit the options spy out menu in the top right hand corner, and then choose new color swatch. The colors that you use to define your dye line and your spot varnish and your spot UV plates need to be 
colors that we can isolate from the rest of our printing. For that reason, the color type needs to be spot. When you change a color type to spot, you can then give your new spot color a name. In this case, we'll make it a dye line. And you can make it any color you want. It, it literally does not matter what the color is, as long as you don't use this specific spot color anywhere else in your design. So this first one I will make, well, the paper's blue, so why don't we try to make this green so that it contrasts with the blue and you can see it. The same process can be used to create a new spot color for the spot varnish plate. Sometimes your design will have both. You will be die cutting something and you will be applying a varnish, so you might need to create two different spot colors. So we can follow, whoops, we can follow that same process by hitting the options buy out menu and create a new color swatch. This time, it's already set to spot, but make sure it is. This time I'm gonna call it dull varnish if I was using dull varnish for my project. And then you can choose a color. Try to use different colors so that when you look at your project, you know, okay, the green is the dye line and the purple is the varnish. Some printing companies use standardized colors. So where I worked, we always used a peachy color for a dye line and a cyan color for a spot varnish plate. Um, as long as you set your project up as a spot color, it really doesn't matter because the printing company can convert those colors to the colors they need. So let's change the color. Let's make it more purple so that we can use it to identify. Actually, let's use cyan because that's what um, I'm familiar with and then select OK. So now if we look at our swatches panel, we have a dye line spot color and a dull varnish spot color. To create a traditional dye line, you will use one point or thinner uh, solid dashed and dotted strokes to indicate where a project cuts, folds, or perforates. So solid lines on the strokes panel under type solid uh, are used to identify cuts. Dashed lines of any sort are used to indicate where something folds and dotted lines indicate perforations. This map only folds so we need to use a dashed line. You'll use your vector art drawing tools to draw your lines. When you're drawing your lines, you need to ensure that you're drawing them on the specific layer that they're associated with. I'm creating a die line, so I'm going to make sure that I'm on the die line layer. If you want to double and triple check to make sure that you're never on the wrong layer, you can always lock all of the other layers. So now I'm going to use, I can actually use the line tool to create these lines. And if you use the line tool, you're going to click and drag to create a line. And if you hold shift, it will snap it to be a straight line. Now I don't need the die line to stop right at the edge of the page. So you can go over a little bit. What's important is that it's communicating exactly where you want that project to fold. In this case, it's going to fold equally in fours across and then down the page in fours. So we can use some of our InDesign skills to automate this process. Um, if you were truly making this, if this was like a 24 by 36 inch poster, your document size would be 24 by 36, and you could use guides to divide your workspace and then snap your strokes to guides, or you could visually look at the ruler. Um, a little cheat is that you can put two extra strokes. So I'm gonna use the key command of holding down the Option key, and if you're on a PC, you'll hold down the Alt key. But you can put one stroke at the beginning, and if you hold Shift, it'll stay in line, and the end of the poster. I don't want these strokes, I'm gonna delete them. But now I can put three of these cyan strokes in the middle. So I can copy, whoops, one, two, three, and it literally doesn't matter where they are. I can select all five of them and use my alignment panel window uh, object and layout align and I can distribute them horizontally so now they're all equally spaced across the page once you do that you can delete the ones on the end because you don't need them and now we can set up our die line so we want to make sure that these lines are one point or thinner historically we used hairline so you can on the strokes panel type in 0.25 points um, that is the thickness of hairline uh, we also need to make sure they indicate folding, so we need to change the stroke type to dashed, and we need 
skip that one. We need to make sure that we're using the dye line spot color. And if you look closely at my swatches panel, since dull varnish was the last spot color I created, it snapped to that. So I need to change the stroke color to be dye line. You can double check it by selecting it. I know it does look like it's black, but if we were to zoom in, um, it is actually a green color. We can repeat that same process to create the horizontal lines that will divide the uh, poster into four sections. You can either take one of these lines and rotate it, or we can just quickly repeat that whole process. So we can create one line that is wider than our page, snap it to the edge of the page size, and then copy it and put it on the end. We need one, two, three magenta lines in the middle. So I'm going to copy this. I'm holding down Option and Shift on a PC that's Alt and Shift and make three copies. Then select all of the strokes, just the strokes, not the blue background, not any of the vertical strokes, and then you can distribute them vertically and now they're equally spaced. Don't forget to go back and delete the top and bottom and then reselect your strokes and change them to be, if you're using hairline, 0.25 points. I don't really like hairline. I think it's really hard to see, um, but you can use hairline. Also make sure that the color you're using for your stroke is dye line. The next thing I want to show you is what happens when you, oops, we forgot to make it a dashed line as well. Okay. The next thing I want to show you is that when you go to print this, you are going to print the blue poster separately from the dye line, and so you're going to color separate them. If we open the separations preview panel and turn the separations on, so change the view from off to separations, you can see all of the colors that are in the document. I would like you to turn off your spot dull varnish and turn off your dye line. When you do this, you can see how your project will print. And if we look closely, you can see that everywhere that the dye line is, we'll leave a bright white piece of unprinted paper underneath. That's because vector art by default is a knockout. Dye lines, including spot varnish and spot UV plates, need to be set as overprints. You can set them via the attributes panel, but to do that, you need to turn your separations off. Then select all of your strokes, all of your horizontal and all of your vertical strokes. On the attributes panel, you cannot set something as a knockout, but you can take a knockout and convert it to be an overprint. To do that, you can make it an overprint fill or an overprint stroke. These are strokes, so we're going to make an overprint stroke. Now, it doesn't look any different right now, but if we turn our separations preview back to being on, and again, we turn our two spot colors off, now you can see that if we zoom in, you're no longer seeing a white spot everywhere the dye line was. So the full image, when it is designed like a poster, will print as is. And then separately from that, we can turn our dye line let, uh, color on and our CMYK off. Separately, this file that shows everywhere that the project needs to fold will be sent to a dye company to make a die that will press on our paper and crease it, called scoring, so that when we go to fold it, it'll be easy to fold. We can follow the same steps to create a spot varnish plate. So turn your separations to off. This is another example here. I'm going to make a bookmark and we're gonna print that bookmark in CMYK. The bookmark is going to trim on four sides using a standard printing cutter, a guillotine cutter that cuts straight lines at 90 degree angles. But I want to spruce up my design by making some of these circles a little bit shiny. So to create a spot varnish where some of these would highlight and be glossy, or in our case, we listed spot dull, so they'll be dull, um, you can follow the same steps that we just followed to create a complex fold die line. The first step is to create a new layer for the die line. So we created a spot dull varnish. I've locked the other layers and now I'm only going to use the dull varnish. You also need to create a separate spot 
color for the varnish, so we created dull varnish as our spot dull varnish color. The only difference between creating a dye line for traditional uh, cuts, folds, and, and perforations is that instead of using strokes, we're going to use fill colors. So if we grab one of our shape tools on the spot dull varnish layer, I'm going to make some circles and fill them in with a color, and I'm going to put them over the circles on the design. It's going to take a little bit of finessing because I want to make them the same size, and if I was really being perfect at it, I would probably use the pen tool, but I just kind of want to get close. So I want this circle, the yellow one, to be dull. So it will be different than whatever the paper type is that we're printing. And then I'm going to copy that using the Option or the Alt key if you're on a PC. And I'm going to move that over the other yellow circle. And I can do this as many times as I want. I could put it over here on the red ones too. And any of the circles that I want to be shiny, um, I would put my circle over. In this case, I'll just do the two yellow ones. And then, instead of using a stroke, I have filled my circle with 100% of the spot varnish color. The dull varnish is this blue, and so let's not accidentally add a fill color, um, a stroke color. I need to make sure the fill color on my shape is set or connected with the spot dull varnish color. Then this indicates to a commercial printer that they're still going to print the artwork as CMYK, but then at the end, they're also going to add a coating just over the yellow circles, the underneath yellow circles. My varnish is being indicated by blue. And again, if we look at the separations preview panel, we can go to view and separations. And if we turn all of our colors on, you will see that you can see the artwork that will print in CMYK, and you see these two blue blobs. Um, if we turn our spot colors off, you will see everywhere ink will be applied. And again, because vector art defaults to being a knockout, um, anywhere underneath the varnish is going to be knocked out, and we don't want that. So we need to turn our separations off, select the object, and we need to convert it to be an overprint. But this time, when we look at the attributes panel, this shape has no stroke. So we can't do an overprint stroke, but we want to do an overprint fill. And we want to do that for both of the shapes and anywhere else that you're using that spot varnish. Now watch what happens. When we go to the view menu, we can turn the separations on and you can see that now the artwork is printing over the top of, um, now the varnish is printing over the top of the CMYK printing. It also kind of helps me be able to move my circle a little bit and make sure that it lines up more precisely with where I was wanting it to line up. I can kind of nudge it into place and make it closer than it was. Now, if I turn off my spot colors, you can see that the entire bookmark will still print. All the yellow will print underneath the gloss, varn uh, the dull varnish area, but I will also print varnish over the top of these circles. And then, if I turn all my colors off except for the varnish, you can see where the printing plate would indicate where the varnish needs to be applied.